This is our Forex Explorer for February 11th, 2013, and I'd like to go over today what I call event-based trading. In other words, you wait for an event to happen, and then you take trades that are very likely to happen to work, I mean, after the event happens. This is our U.S. dollar index, and for the last six or seven years, we've come up with tons of different statistical tools that would compare the dollar to every other uh, currency out there and show you how strong or weak it is. You can see one of them right here, FX Trend Intensity. Um, a few weeks ago, I've come up with indexes for each pair. This is the dollar. And so when it breaks above Sunday's maximum high for the index, like right here a little bit before 3, that's an event that's very likely to cause a trend. And you can see for many hours it you know, kept going up. This is event-based trading in its finest. Also, you can see the hourly moving average in gray. When a currency is above that, it's more likely to go up. When a currency is underneath that, it's more likely to go down. A lot of times when you have breakouts from above to below the hourly, those trends will continue. Uh, and you can clearly see on the chart that this one broke down and kind of went sideways here. And then when it finally uh, broke above this little trend line right here, uh, it went up for the last two hours. So this is what I mean by event-based trading. Trend line breaks. Uh, breakouts from below to above the previous day's high, breakouts from above to below the previous day's low. This is the point of control uh, for the previous day. This is the position where most traders have dollar positions. So people that are long are making money, people that are short are losing money. So uh, breaks from above to below the point of control tend to lead to big moves, 30 to 50 pips. And that's it. So this one's strong, and especially strong here uh, from 3 to about... Seven. So we're going to uh, put this on, on here uh, and put a U for up for each of these hours from 3 to 7. Very likely to continue trending up. Here's the yen. <clears throat> and notice how when it went from above the hourly moving average to underneath it, that was the beginning of the trend. And this is a perfect example of event-based trading. Also, when it went from above to below the point of control in the previous day's low, also uh, events. And the point of control can be anywhere inside of the previous day's range. It might be right at the high, right at the low, or in the middle, or anywhere in between. Uh, it's based on that trading activity where traders have most positions in yen pairs for all the yen pairs. And so you can see from 3 to really about 7 when it hit the lower containment balance, pretty high probability. Notice how it pulled right up to the hourly moving average twice in was an amazing place to go short both times. Also another event. When a currency is underneath the previous day's low and it retraces back to uh, that area, it's very high probability. Also, when you um, draw your fibs on here, notice it made a 38% fib uh, retracement as well. Fibs, if you hold down the shift key uh, when you're drawing the fibs, uh, it allows you to use fibs on this. Also trend lines work. If you were looking to do a counter trend trade uh, you might have drawn your trend line over these this area right here and at 8 o'clock uh, you know the downtrend's over and you can see for about two and a half hours it went up. Uh, how much how easy is that to to time your trading? Wait for a trend line break and get in. So again let's look at uh, selling this from about 340 till it gets down here and does a slightly double bottom right here, or even with a trend line. We'll say 3 to 8. This one's down. All right, let's take a look at the euro and the pound, and we'll start from there. The, the euro is trending up. It started the day and broke out above the, uh, the previous day's high and stayed above it all day. Also notice how it acted as support here. It slightly broke it here, and then when it went from underneath back above it and the trend was already up, this right here, 1540, was a great place to go along as well. But pretty much uh, from midnight until maybe uh, 8 o'clock, definitely trend up. And then from 11, uh, but we're not going to, we're going to focus on the most active times. And let's just take a look at the pound now. The pound went from above to below its hourly. And notice how it found support at the previous day's low. Uh, and now keep in mind that this is an index that I created. The vast majority of traders don't have this. Uh, I'm a firm believer that the professional traders out there have developed something similar for their own use because these uh, levels work so well uh, as support resistance. And so when it breaks through here, 
great place to go short. But this is the, the, the weakest part right here from about 2, and then it goes sideways down here. We'll just say from 2 to 11, the trend is down. And it really never pulled back at all. You know, new lows also could be considered an event. Anytime a currency has been trending down and goes sideways in a very tight little rectangle pattern right here at 10, great place, very high probability, probably 80% likely. Uh, and when I say high probability, not only is it very likely to work, it's also very likely to make you a lot of pips, not 5 or 10 pips or 15 pips, but usually 30 to 50 pips. Uh, if you found a currency that broke out up at the same time this one broke down, and was super strong to trade the pound against, you're probably going to get 30, 50, sometimes 80, 100 pips. Uh, so not only is it super high probability, but it's also super likely to give you a lot of pips. Uh, and, you know, that's why uh, this, this method of trading is the best we've ever come up with because it's so easy and uh, even brand new traders can learn to trade in five minutes using this. But we're going to say we want to short the pound all day. So let's go and put it down for the pound. All right, so now that you can, and I'm only doing this so that, because I want to show how, what each currency was strong or weak and what times it was strong or weak. We have the dollar going up, the yen going down, the euro going up, the pound going down. So basically you would buy the euro yen, you would uh, sell the pound dollar, and you would also want to buy the euro pound, you know? And obviously we have uh, every one of the other ones. We can should put the Swiss on here the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar. Notice when it broke from underneath above the hourly right here, exploded up. That was around 5 o'clock. Um, we already know that the pound was one of the weakest ones. So the pound New Zealand uh, was just a phenomenal sell uh, right here at around 6 when the New Zealand went super strong. Look at 6 o'clock right here. It fell from 88.50 to 8,700. It's 150 pips. So that's three times more than uh, the number of pips I was telling you before that I considered, you know, definitely worth trading. So remember, we want to uh, sell the pound dollar. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that when the dollar is strong and the pound is weak, you sell it. And here's some of the sells that I would have uh, taken. This little pullback right here when it broke, uh, when it kind of went a little fly pattern right there and it broke, broke down underneath. I'm going to um, zoom in on the chart and scroll back and we'll go over all the trades I would have taken. I like and prefer pullbacks, but when currencies are this weak, you don't get any pullbacks. You get little sideways flag patterns. I mean, that's all you're going to get. You draw your fibs on that and that gives you an idea of where your next profit target is. You know, if it shoots through the first one, typically I'll get out of my whole trade for 1.618. But as you can see, short this at 57.50. You're out here around 10. That's a 40 pip move. Like I said, when you use our currency meter like this, along with the indexes, uh, it, it pretty much takes the guesswork out. You can just use trend lines for entry and exit. You know, in here, out here, what would that be? Short 57.15, out at 90, 25 pips. You know, amazing. Now remember, the euro was pound, uh, strong and the yen was weak. So the euro yen is the, the one that you'd be looking for buys in. That's in. Look at this 1500 right here. Uh, this is a 125 pips late in the uh, U.S. session. If we go back and look at the euro chart. You can see it broke from underneath above its hourly, and boom. And I bet if you look at the yen chart, it was falling rapidly, as you can see. So when one of them is going down rapidly and the other one's going up rapidly, you find these 100 plus pip moves. I mean, it's not rocket science. I've made it so easy that, you know, it's my total opinion that anybody can trade Forex now with these tools. All right, so let's go back and look at this. The euro was strong all day, the pound was weak all day. So obviously you want to buy the euro pound too. All right, so it, knowing that you're looking for buys in a currency when one's strong and the other one's weak, you know, again, there's two main methods of entering the trade, nice little sideways rectangle pattern and pullbacks. And the farther up a currency goes, the more likely that you're going to need a deeper pullback. Uh, currencies are this strong. Sometimes they're not going to pull back to the 38 or 50 percent like I'd like. That's why our new FIB tool, about two months ago, we put in a, a I think it's a 24 percent pullback level. And, you know, this is the area where it becomes 
relatively safe to look for a pullback in a super strong or super weak currency. So you can see it just barely got to that level and within about five to ten minutes after that broke out above it. And you can just use the trend line and it breaks the trend line you're in. And this one's already gone up a little bit, up again, up again. So I would put my fib on on the whole thing like the last move. Let me uh, do that again here. Hold on, let me take this off. I'm having problems with my mouse today. And you can see it just touched that fib level to the pip, uh, you know, from the last real swing. This one went up and it really didn't even pull back. It was just kind of a pause. So I guess traders were considering this the whole swing. It was 71 pips. The bigger the, the swing, the more likely the fib target is to work. Tagged it to the pip. You know, that's a weird number, 85.73. Just touched that level and that was the end of the move. But if you would have taken this last trade right here, 85.26 went up about 50 pips. Again, this is about as easy as I can ever make trading. And, you know, sign up, open an account, and get the software for free. If you trade with FXDD, FXCM, Alpari, Forex.com, make us your introducing broker if you already have an account. Uh, typically, if your account's older, they're going to make you get a new account through us and transfer funds from the old to the new account. Spreads are the same, whether you trade with us or with the broker, but you get our software. You get our tools that no one else offers because I invented them and I don't disclose what the formulas are. No one else has. Them. So, But you can get them for free or if you want to buy the software, it's 2000 You can lease it for $150 a month without the data, $200 a month with the data. Easy. We use eSignal data.